Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be an action and thriller movie from 2011 called The Mechanic. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The film opens with a scene where a Colombian cartel leader is swimming, surrounded by his security detail. Suddenly, out of nowhere, he is forcefully dragged underwater by an unseen assailant, struggling to breathe until he succumbs and drowns. The mysterious killer quickly makes his escape unnoticed through a rear exit. Immediately after, the murderer dives into a nearby river, a move to wash away any traces of his presence. As the narrative progresses, the audience is introduced to a character named Bishop. It is revealed that Bishop is the very individual who orchestrated the earlier assassination of the cartel boss. A professional assassin by trade, Bishop is good in his planning. He ensures that each execution is carefully strategized to appear as an unfortunate accident rather than a deliberate act of homicide. The following day, Bishop has a meeting with a close associate of his named Harry. It turns out that the murder Bishop committed the day before was carried out at Harry's request, for which Bishop received a substantial sum. Subsequently, Bishop arranges a meeting with his employer, Dean, to discuss the details of a new assignment. During this meeting, Dean reveals the failure of a previous assassination operation in South Africa which resulted in the deaths of five agents. Dean explains to Bishop that the only individuals aware of the South African mission were himself and Harry. He then drops a shocking revelation. Harry has betrayed him by revealing details of the assassination plan to their enemies. To prove his claim, Dean presents evidence of Harry's bank transactions which clearly show payments received for the leaked information. The gravity of the betrayal leads Dean to assign Bishop a new and deeply personal task to eliminate his best friend and mentor, Harry. Later that evening, Bishop, grappling with the weight of his assignment, places a call to Harry, who is still at his office. Bishop urgently warns Harry to make his way to the basement, cautioning him that a hitman is on his way to kill him. Trusting Bishop, Harry follows his instructions precisely. He grabs a pair of scissors which he'll need to cut the power, exactly as Bishop directed. He then takes the service elevator down to the basement. Upon reaching the parking lot, Harry discovers his car window is smashed. Looking around, he finds Bishop as the only other person present. It dawns on Harry that he has been set up by Bishop, making it appear that he would die in a supposed car accident. Unwilling to die according to the planned accident, Harry confronts Bishop and bravely asks him to shoot him instead, seeking a more honorable end. Bishop hesitates, torn by the request, but ultimately his commitment to his professional duties takes precedence. With a heavy heart, Bishop fulfills Harry's request and shoots him, resulting in his death. A few days after this incident, Bishop finds himself meeting with Harry's son, Steve. During Harry's funeral, Steve approaches Bishop and asks for a ride home. While they are together, Steve reveals that his father didn't leave him any inheritance. He also shares that his house is about to be taken over by the bank due to unpaid debts. Feeling sympathetic towards Steve, Bishop suggests that they meet at a local dog shelter. There, they end up adopting a dog together. Bishop gives Steve the responsibility of caring for the new dog, explaining that this is part of his preparation to eventually work alongside Bishop. The following day, Bishop instructs Steve to take the dog to a nearby coffee shop, order a coffee, and sit by the window with the dog for an hour. He tells Steve he must repeat this routine daily for the next three weeks. As Steve follows through with these tasks, Bishop takes the opportunity to train him in shooting, honing his skills for future challenges. Once Steve is sufficiently prepared, Bishop hands him a document detailing the plan for someone's assassination and instructs him to study it thoroughly. Due to the bank confiscating his house, Steve finds himself living at Bishop's residence. A few days later, after a brief discussion, Bishop takes Steve to the residence of a person involved in illegal arms dealing. Upon their arrival, Bishop quickly ends the gun dealer's life by strangling him and tying a knot around his neck. Back at home, Bishop provides Steve with a document that contains information about his first target, someone he is tasked with killing. The target is revealed to be a hitman affiliated with a rival group. Interestingly, Steve's aunt is a regular at the coffee shop where Steve has been taking his chihuahua, which the hitman also frequents. It becomes clear that the hitman's main vulnerabilities are his fondness for attractive young men and his love for puppies. This is precisely why Bishop had earlier instructed Steve to regularly visit the coffee shop with the dog, aiming to facilitate a friendship between Steve and the hitman. After establishing a rapport with the hitman, Steve takes the next step by inviting him to meet at a bar. This is part of the plan to get closer to the target, using the connection they've built as leverage. 
Before they head to the bar, Bishop gives Steve a syringe filled with enough doses of rohypnol to stop a person's heart for three minutes if injected. However, at the bar, Steve decides against using the drug as instructed by Bishop. Instead, Steve opts for a more direct approach. When invited to the target's house for some risky activities, Steve seizes the opportunity to attack. Initially, Steve struggles to overpower the man, but with a stroke of luck, he manages to deliver a fatal blow and kills the target. A few days later, Dean assigns another mission to Bishop. For this task, Bishop brings Steve along. Their new target is a well-known figure claiming to be a prophet named Andrew. They study his profile carefully and plan to execute him using an injection that would mimic a heart attack. The next day, Bishop and Steve put their plan into action. They sneak into Andrew's apartment through the air ducts. However, the situation inside is not as they expected, leading them to abandon their initial plan of using an injection. Instead, they decide to get Andrew on the spot. After the deed is done, Bishop and Steve quickly flee the scene. Unfortunately, due to Steve's negligence, they are detected, and a gunfight breaks out between them and Andrew's bodyguard. Thanks to Bishop's strategic thinking, they manage to escape and split up. Later, at a station, Bishop unexpectedly encounters one of the five agents Dean had mentioned was involved in the South Africa operation. Bishop follows and confronts the agent, discovering the truth. The agent had been bribed by Dean to betray and kill four of his colleagues. The agent then manipulated his own death records and started false rumors that Harry had leaked the mission. This was done so Dean could take over the company without any interference from Harry. This revelation leads to a confrontation between Bishop and the agent on a bus, ending with Bishop forcefully ejecting the agent from the bus. Feeling betrayed, Bishop then sends a message to Dean warning him that he is now on Bishop's radar for retaliation. Later that day, Bishop and Steve head back to their place to gather all the necessary equipment to exact revenge on Dean for his deceit. However, a new complication arises when Steve unexpectedly finds his father's favorite gun in a box owned by Bishop. Despite the shock and confusion, Steve tries to remain professional and continues to follow Bishop's commands. Meanwhile, Dean becomes aware that Bishop has pinpointed his location. In response, he exits his office with his entourage in tow. However, their escape is abruptly halted by Bishop and Steve, who block their path with a hijacked truck. Showing no mercy, the duo opens fire, fatally shooting Dean. Having avenged Harry's death, they begin their journey home. On the way, Bishop notices that Harry's gun has found its way into Steve's pocket, realizing that Steve has discovered he was the one who killed his father. While stopping to refuel their car, Steve intentionally allows the gasoline to spill. He then casually walks away and fires at the car, causing it to explode. Steve proceeds to Bishop's house to take Bishop's car. As he drives away, Steve discovers a note from Bishop inside the car. He chuckles upon reading the message, but just moments later, the car he is in explodes. Unknown to Steve, Bishop had anticipated this turn of events and had already jumped out of the car before it blew up. In the final scene of the movie, we see Bishop detonating his house, leaving the wreckage behind as he drives away in another car, marking the end of the film. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.